Hey everybody, today I'm going to do a couple of video tutorials on how to create a color changing mock up so that you can not only put your design on the front of an item in the mock up like this, but you can also change the color of the object that you're putting your design on so that you can use the color picker and just go anywhere you like on here. All right, uh, I want to warn you in advance, I don't normally do video tutorials. I've been asked to do this one as a video uh, especially, so be prepared for a lot of ums and ah and so, and I will try my best not to swear. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to close this little guy out. I am going to open up my photograph of a plain white coffee mug. Uh, I took this picture out in front of my house with my cell phone camera. So it's not super high res or anything. It's just kind of, you know, moderately high res as most phone cameras are these days. Uh, I got the mug for like 50 cents at a thrift store. And if you ever get a mug that has like coffee stains or tea stains in it, just make kind of a paste out of baking soda and water and scrub it around in there. And you will be shocked at how crappy coffee mugs come right back to life and gleam like new. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to isolate the mug from the background. Basically, we want to erase everything in the background so that all we're left with is the mug. So I'm going to make a copy of the mug to work with. I certainly don't want to mess too much with our background layer. I just want to keep that in holding, keep it aside. So I'm going to right click over here, hit duplicate layer. I'm going to call this mug. And so now we have a copy of our layer to work with. I'm also going to put, and you'll see why in a second, I'm going to put a brand new layer in between the two here, and I am just going to flood it with a nice pleasant color. I've got a blue already selected over here that I like. The primary reason I'm doing that is if I'm going to be doing erasing on my mug layer, if I just erase, it's just going to show me that transparency black and white checkerboard thing, and that is so busy and can get kind of hard to look at. So I usually, when I'm working with transparency in any way, I like to just throw a layer of a solid color, and I think it makes things a lot easier to see. All right, so a couple of different ways we could go about erasing the background from this image. An easy way would be to just take the eraser tool, select our image, and just go to town erasing. And there you can see my blue background showing through. So you know that you're erasing this front. The problem is if you make any kind of error and you only realize it later, you're really kind of out of luck on fixing that because once things are erased, they're gone forever. So I actually, I'm going to undo here, control Z to undo. Uh, I am going to do a layer mask and that is a way of erasing the background, but it's non-destructive. The image itself stays the same. I'm putting a mask over the top and telling the mask what to show and what to hide. If you've never worked with a layer mask, they're actually surprisingly easy. All you need to do is select the layer, so I've selected my mug, and you're going to click this rectangle with the circle in it, and boom, it has added a layer mask. Right now the layer mask is completely filled with white. Uh, and the key to layer masks is anything that's white, it's going to show you. And anything that is black, it's going to hide. In design school, they teach you uh, the rhyming device, white reveals, black conceals. I personally have a hard time with that because my brain wants to switch those things up. So I like to think about it as black is like night, and you can't see things well at night. So I know that if I'm coloring something in black, you're not going to be able to see it. Here's what I'm talking about. I've got the layer mask selected here. You can see I've got the the little highlight around it here. I'm going to use my paintbrush and I'm going to make that nice and big. And I've got black selected here. And if I paint black on the layer mask, it's going to do the same thing that erasing did. It's completely chopping out that background. And you can see over here, the image itself remains exactly the same, but the layer mask has white where it's showing you stuff and black where it's not showing you stuff. Okay, so now there are, there are another couple of ways that you could go. You could use a paintbrush, and you could make it really tiny and delicate. Like, here's a 13-point paintbrush. 
and I'm going to zoom way in here on my mug. And I could use my paintbrush and just delicately go all the way around the outside of the mug, bit by bit, little stroke by little stroke, to get that thing isolated and get the background erased. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems like a lot of work that I really don't want to do right now. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to undo out from all of this, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit here to give myself some breathing room, and I'm just going to use my magnetic lasso tool. And I'm going to go bit by bit around the outside of the mug, because there are a lot of straight sides to the mug. Some of these areas can be done pretty quick with the lasso, and other ones, it's okay if you kind of get a curve made out of little straight lines. Everything's going to sort itself out eventually. But if I go around, 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 and then just select some of this background too. There I've got a nice big blobby area. And I'm going to use my paint bucket and just fill that in with black. And boom! Transparent. I'm going to deselect that area and see, now you can see. And here's another reason why I really like to put that color behind instead of the transparency. Let me show you. You can see along here, there's the white of the mug, but there's just the slightest halo of darkness from where the background is still in there. And it's so hard to get these things perfectly separated. I'm totally happy with this. But if you had this color turned off, and if you were just doing this transparency, you know, it looks a little bit different. I like having that color back there only because it kind of gives you an idea of really what it's going to look like on top of a color, whether it's this blue or whether it's the green color of the plant behind the mug. It, I think it's a better judge for your eye of how the final project is going to look. Because that's just, it's kind of funky. It's kind of weird, right? Right. All right, so uh, I'm going to fast forward a bit while I zip through using my magnetic lasso tool to grab chunks around the outside of the mug. So please enjoy that and fast forward with some of this lovely public domain music. All right, so there we are. We've done an outline pretty much around the entire mug. And now to make it easy, we can just take our paint bucket tool because we've got that outline kind of protecting the mug itself. If I just click the paint bucket tool anywhere out here, it's going to fill everything else in. Now you will see if you zoom way in here, you can see that there are some very fine lines around the outside of every area that you did the paint bucket tool on. That's another reason to have this solid colored layer in there, because if we didn't have that, those would be a lot harder to see and spot. So what I'm going to do is take my little paintbrush, and I'm just going to zip around. Oop, no, I want my layer mask there, and I'm going to paint in black. Yep. Zip around these guys and get rid of them. All right, so that leaves us with our mug, completely isolated, but our original artwork with the mug is totally untouched. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that we can change the color on this mug. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer that is a rectangle. So I'm going to use my shape making tool. I'm going to pick the rectangle and I'm just going to make it the entire size of my canvas. There I have a rectangle. I'm going to color it in just something generic. Let's pick another, let's pick this green here. That's great. It's a big green rectangle. And so here's the cool thing that I'm going to do. I am going to take the layer mask and I'm going to copy it onto this rectangle shape. 
the rectangle makes it easy to pick the color. You just double click on it and it brings up the color picker. So that's why I like using the rectangle. And then by hitting Alt and then dragging the mask down, what I'm doing there, let me turn off the top layer here, is now I am coloring in only this portion of the rectangle that is white on the mask. So now if I turn off this blue layer and I turn my background back on, you can see that I'm applying this color to the mug shape. Now of course it's it's flat and boring and totally weird. So here's what I want to do. I want to keep this layer totally normal so that the color is as rich and vibrant as it can be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of filters over the top so that the curves and the shape and the shadows of the mug are visible. So I want to turn my mug layer back on here and I'm actually going to make a duplicate of it. Do, do, do. Oh, actually duplicate layer. Boom. There we go. And we're going to say this is mug two. And what I'm going to do is I am going to apply a couple of styles here. What I'm going to do is for the bottom one of these, I'm going to turn it from normal here in my style picker to overlay. And you can see what it's doing here is it's now adding some of the shadows and shades and highlights over the top of that solid green color. But overlay isn't enough. Uh, an overlay can be kind of muddy in and of itself. So I'm going to take my second layer here and I'm going to apply a linear burn. But I'm going to knock it down to maybe about 50%. So what that's going to do is between the overlay and the linear burn, we're getting some of the dark shadows coming through and we're getting some of the light highlights coming through. And so both of these are kind of stacking on top of each other. And so then you can change the color of your mug to whatever color you like. Some colors are going to work better than others. Uh, like, for example, if I go to this super deep that's like really bright you know what I'm saying it's like burning my eyes bright so you can either kind of mute it by going with a less saturated color or you can also kind of monkey with your levels of overlay and linear burn and I, if, if you haven't played with these styles for your layers please play around with them I, I mean sometimes I'll take a layer like let's take this one that I have on overlay and I'll just start it dissolve and see what it does and then I'm going to use my down arrow key because I've got this selected I can hit down arrow and it's just going to cycle through all of these different things and you can see what each one of them does even if you can't remember is this the one I use for lighter colors is this is the one I use for darker colors I can never remember if you just scroll through them you can see what each one does just using your down arrow key and some of them are really funky, some of them are really cool, some of them don't do much of anything. And you can kind of figure out how you want yours to work. So I'm going to go back to overlay, turn my linear burn layer back on, and I'm going to go to this nice kind of teal color. I think that looks really nice. All right, so I am going to group these two layers together, these two guys, the filter layers. I'm going to control G to make a group. And I'm going to say filters, do not touch. This is if I'm going to be selling this. I kind of don't want the end user to be monkeying with this too much if they're not sure of what those filters do. Of course, if you know what filters do, you can go in and play around with them as much as you like. And then for this layer right here, I'm going to say change color here. And then I can delete my blue layer. I'm not doing any more erasing or masking, so I'm good to go on that. And boom, there's part one uh, where we have changed our plain white mug into a mug that we can change the color on. So in the next video, we are going to talk about how to put your design on here and how to get it so that it follows the curves of the mug.